Since I got the old truck licensed and insured, I've been dying to drive it. But if you remember, it quit on me, throttle cable broke, and the brakes are quite iffy. So let's do a little work on this thing and get it roadworthy. I think I'm gonna start off with pulling the gas tank out, cleaning it out, and I'm gonna get some tank liner and line the tank. But let me show you this first. See this? That's my throttle cable. Whilst trying to go from there to here, it broke. That's the third time. What y'all don't know is, right after I uh, uploaded that video, I was driving from my house to here. It quit on me. I had to uh, blow out the fuel line again. And the throttle cable broke. So that's three times now that the throttle cable's broke. It's got to be fixed. Well, let's get that tank out first. As you can see, the gas tank's in the cab. So the first thing I gotta do is get this seat back out of the way. Actually, the first thing I gotta do is drain the gas out of it. Then, I gotta get this seat back off, and uh, then we can pull the tank out. I'm gonna pull the fuel lines off up here at the filter. That way I ain't gotta get down below trying to get that uh, hose off the gas tank and getting a face full of gasoline. That would not be a good time. Watch this little trick. I don't wanna get gas everywhere. So I'm gonna do that right there and stop it up. Now I'm gonna feed it down below, get it in them buckets. And we can get it drained. Lost the weight on that gas tank to drain. I think I'm gonna jack the back end up and uh, let's have a look at them brakes and see why that right rear was locking up. Well, I don't really see nothing other than there's something sticky on it, and that's that's probably making it grab. The drum looks pretty good. It ain't no grooves. ain't hardly any wear on it, but that sticky stuff is in there, too. So, I don't know if the wheel cylinder leaks a little bit, and this is brake fluid that's gotten sticky, or don't know. But I do think I may go ahead and get some new brake shoes for it. They don't cost that much anyway. And go ahead and change both sides out and see if that don't stop this this side from locking up but while i got it up in the air let's go ahead and pull the other side off and uh, see what it looks like well here's the other side it looks fine to me i don't see anything sticky like on that other side that's most likely just brake fluid i guess got sticky over time so let's just go ahead and put a new set of brakes on it because these are probably 30 40 years old maybe older and while I'm in here, go ahead and put uh, new wheel cylinders in it, just in case that is leaking over there. Well, this is odd. I just got done draining the gas tank. I got about four gallons out of it. Those were two gallons a piece. And it never slowed down, like the line was not stopped up. Now, there is rust, some rust in the bottom of these. I don't know how much, can't really tell. But I'm going to drain them and filter them just to see how much rust, but... What's going on? Why is the truck quitting? If the gas line ain't stopped up with rust, what's the issue? The filter, I don't believe it's a filter. Because if you remember, I filled it up and it sucked it dry. So that means the fuel's going through that filter. So what's the issue? I wonder if it may be like a loose line or something like that. I don't know. I'm going to check all the whole fuel system out, I guess. And maybe we can figure out what's going on with it. But I'm still gonna pull that tank and look down in it. It's not that hard to get out. And just added insurance and, and we may still go ahead and put the tank liner in it. So let me get it pulled out and we'll see what kind of shape it's in. Well, I'm up under here, fix to take this fuel line loose right here and pull the gas tank out. Now there's a couple of things I noticed. One, 
I need to go on a dirt dauber nest cleaning spree. There's a big nest there. Some on the exhaust there. There's a big one on the exhaust there. It's all the way, well, about halfway around. There's some more back here on the muffler. I don't know if you can see that or not. And number two, going up this frame rail at the very other end is the fuel line going to the fuel pump. There's something dripping off it. So I got to investigate that. And I don't know if it's a hole, maybe a line loose on the fuel pump and it's running down. I'll just have to see. Tell you what, I've changed my mind. Let's just take this sanding unit out, shine a light down in there, and just see what it looks like. Well, I guess that's why my gas gauge don't work. The <laughs> float's gone. Let's see if I can get this down in there where y'all can see it. Oh yeah, you can see a little bit. Uh, there's some stuff in there. I don't know if it's rust or what. But see how there's still gas standing? We're right above the outlet. There's still gas standing. Let me rock the truck maybe. You can see it, yeah. Why is it not coming out the fuel line? Is it stopped up? We're going to find out, I guess. So uh, let me get this pulled off. And we'll stick some rocks down in it and get all that crap out. I'm not sure if I'm going to line it or not. I may just clean it out real good. We'll just see. Well, I completely forgot about this aggravation. The little stud is too long for a regular socket, a short socket. A deep well, you can't get on it because of the seat frame. So, I'm going to attempt a wrench. I know I've gotten it out two or three times, so I don't know, I'll figure it out. What I'm going to have to do, I'm not going to do it to this wrench, but I'm going to find a half inch wrench that I don't care about. I'm going to cut that sucker off. Alrighty, I found me old cheap Chinese wrench and I cut the end of it off. Now we can get the end off of here. It's going to take a while, though. I've got to take filler neck hoses loose. There is a lot of garbage in this truck. Rust and acorns from mices. What's down in there? It's a great big old mouse house right there. I gotta check it, and make sure there ain't no babies in there. I don't wanna suck them up and then have them die in the shop back. But this little fella right here, why does he look so scary to me? I don't know if it's his color or what, but he's probably gonna die. Remember that gas that was standing in the bottom right here at this outlet? Well, I sloshed the tank around a little bit and gas is now coming out of there so that means that pipe right there or the elbow one was stopped up with rust I'm sure so let's go ahead and get it cleaned out and uh, uh, it depends on how long it takes that tank liner to dry I won't have to wait two or three days if it dries in a few hours and you put it back in use then then we'll do it but right now I'm gonna clean this out with put a bunch of rocks in it and shake it around and wash it out with water and get it cleaned out now that I got rocks in it Let's roll it around. We'll be rocking and rolling. All right, here's the first rinse. The rocks are still in it. Do this two or three times. That's pretty disgusting right there. Pretty disgusting. Well, I'm proud to say after three twists and shouts and a lot of rinsing out, I believe it's pretty clean. Let's see if we can look inside of it. 
I believe that's a whole lot cleaner than it was when I started. So, I'm gonna read up on that tank liner and just see how long it takes for it to set up. Like I said, if it's gonna be several days, I just ain't gonna do it. I'll, I'll dry it out and we'll put it back in. Well, I got that blower right there blowing up in the gas tank, drying it out. And I have decided not to use any kind of liner. Nobody in town has any in stock. And I'm not gonna order it online and wait three or four days for it to get here. So we're just gonna dry it out and put it back in. And uh, I got that fuel line all going to the fuel pump. Let me show you it. Here's the fuel line. And it's got a cut in it or a blown out place or something. That might be what the issue was. Because, you know, it's on the suction side. So it may not have been able to suck any out of the tank. So let's go ahead and replace all the lines. I'm going to get a filter. And I'm going to get back brakes. I'm going to get something to fix that darn throttle cable. Because that's really, really starting to annoy me. So let me go to O'Reilly's and get some parts. I'll be right back. I had to pull the wheel cylinder off of the passenger side. That's the one with the sticky stuff. And look here, it's definitely leaking. So that's most likely what that stuff is coming from. I had to pull it off because uh, apparently Impalas have two different thread size and two different piston sizes. So I got to measure all that and see what I've got and then go get some. Well, I'm back from Ireland, got a few parts. I want to show you this right here real quick. This is the old one. See right there? Made in USA. This is the new one. This is the box that come in. Made in China. It's a shame and disgrace that we're not making stuff over here in the US. It's just a shame. Anyway, I could go on for days about that. I'm gonna start with the rear brakes over here because I gotta change wheel cylinders. That means I got the bleed, gravity bleed. So while it's gravity bleeding, I'll get the uh, gas tank put in. So let me get started on these brakes. I really, really hate doing drum brakes, but it's gotta be done, so let's get it going. Well, we got nowhere to grab hope. always lay them out on the ground like they come off makes it a little bit easier and never take both sides off at the same time <laughs> because you're gonna have to go to the other side and look and see how it's put together that brake line is froze so it's fitting well I tried to get it brake loose it broke all right that's a bad thing about working on these old vehicles brake lines the fittings get froze to the brake line. And you go to loosen them up and they break. That's what happened here. So I was wanting to run new brake lines anyway, so I guess I will have to now. There it is. Twisted into. Just like clockwork. This cheap Chinese junk right here. It don't fit. It don't fit at all. I'm going to grind some off the top of it. All right, I feel much safer using Chinese junk. I always put the self-adjuster and the spring on there first. It just seems to be like it's easier to me to get it on there. Oh, almost forgot. These little fellers here, they probably won't stay in, but they might. Always go ahead and put this spring on. It sort of help hold that 
Oh, that one side, I don't keep it from moving around on you. Ah. Get on there. All right, I forgot this piece. Let's see if we can get it in. All right, and then this piece goes on the self-adjuster. And then up here. This one goes on that one. If I can get it to turn around. All right. Now, did I forget? Yes, I got one piece left. I get this little spring in here. Let me hear devil. All right. I believe that's it. Other than doing a little adjusting, the wrong way. Let's try that. <laughs> way too loose. It's a little tight. Color. Y'all are wondering why I'm taking it on and off. Well, there's no slot back here to adjust it. And the slot in this drum is right here. It's never been knocked out. I don't feel like getting up and getting a hammer and punch knocking it out. So I'm just taking the drum on and off. I think I'm going to leave it right there. Now I get to make a brake line, and I don't know that I got any uh, steel line that size. Let me go look and see. Well, I got the brake line done from the passenger side over to the T right there. I run out of brake lines, so I'll have to go to town tomorrow and get some. Let me show you a little trick on brake lines. You might know it already, but I'm gonna show you anyway. A lot of times when you buy new brake lines, you know, like the sticks, four, five, six foot long, comes with the fittings on it. Most of the time those are metric. Well, working on this older stuff, it's all standard size. Well, all you gotta do is reuse your old fittings. I do it all the time. I do it pretty much every time. And all you gotta do is get your cut off wheel and cut it off flush. And then you get your punch, same size or smaller than your brake line. And you gotta tighten the vise up a little bit more. Then, just drive that old line out. And then, it sticks on your punch sometimes, so you gotta turn this around, like so. Knock your punch back through. Then what I do, is I got a small file that'll fit in there, and uh, I'll file all around the inside, cause it's gonna be a little rusty. Then it'll slide on the uh, tubing a lot easier. But that's what I do most of the time on brake lines. Alrighty, I got new brake lines across the rear end and about a two or three foot section up from the hose coming towards the front. It was old and rusted, so I replaced it. I got the bleeders open. So I think it's time to fill this up with some brake fluid and let it gravity bleed while I go ahead and put the gas tank back in. I did a whole lot of vacuuming in here and it looks a whole lot better. So let's get the gasoline tank back in.
I'm not gonna hook these wires up. And that's the ground, and there's the power for it. It don't work, so there's no need hooking it up. But I am gonna get one because I plan on driving this thing quite a bit. Now I need to get down below and run new fuel lines. I had to go to three stores to find fuel lines. Is there a fuel line shortage? I don't know. Well, we've got a newly refreshed fuel system now. Gas tank's clean, got new fuel lines all the way to the fuel pump. Got a new fuel filter. So hopefully that'll take care of that problem. Now, I've got new spark plugs, but I can't find anybody that stocks uh, copper spark plug wires. I don't want silicone. I want copper on this truck. Nobody carries them. So I think what I'm gonna do is replace the plugs. If that don't fix the miss, then uh, I will go through each plug wire, pulling it off while it's running, see which cylinder's dead, and some kind of way fix that wire. I've got copper wire, I just don't have any ends. I'll come up with something to, to fix the wire, and then I'll probably order a set of copper wires online tonight sometime. Well, I got all the spark plugs changed, and not one single spark plug did I have to use a socket on. I turned every one of them out by hand. That's kind of odd to me, every one of them be loose. The only thing I can think of, the only logical explanation I can think of is the mice have been working on my truck and they just didn't tighten them. But an even more serious problem is I can't get the brakes to gravity bleed at all. Nothing is coming out. I've even stepped on the pedal and the fluid level has dropped quite a bit, easing down on the pedal, but it still won't gravity bleed. It's probably uh, not getting by the proportioning valve I don't have anybody here to help me uh, bleed them. So I had to break out the old vacuum pump right there. And we'll give it a shot, see what it does. And another problem I've got while I was working under the hood, watch this water pump right here. You see it moving? That bearing is completely wore out and it's pretty loud when it's running. So sometime pretty soon, I'll have to put a water pump on it. But for now, let's work on the brakes and see if we can't get them uh, some kind of bled anyway Well, the vacuum bleeder didn't want to work very well either. Well, hey look at here. Look who's coming. Miss Daisy Come here girl What are you doing? Huh? Hey, what are you doing girl? All right, go around back see if there's any food Anyway, like I said the vacuum bleeder didn't want to do very well So I had to wait till my assistant across the road got home and we got them bled now I got the front end jacked up, fixing to do an Earl change. Then once I get that done, we'll fire it up, let it warm up, and uh, hopefully the miss is gone. Number eight cylinder, the spark plug, the porcelain was half gone, so hopefully that's the miss, and it's not a plug wire. And after that, I'm gonna check the timing and make sure everything's okay with it. All righty, she's got fresh Earl in her, and before I started up warming up, you know what I forgot? Throttle cable. I have looked everywhere in town. Nobody has anything that I need. So I'm just going to rig something up right now. Better better than this right here. Where did it go? Better than this right here. And uh, for now and then tonight, I'll have to figure something out that I can find online. So let me get that fixed and then we'll get it warmed up. Check for the uh, miss and check the timing. And then we'll take her down the road. While I'm waiting for it to warm up, let me tell y'all how I normally set the timing. Well, there's a couple different ways you can do it. The very quickest and easiest way is to keep advancing the timing until it don't want to start, you back it off a little bit. That's just to get it going and get it on the road. The second way, yeah, I don't do this very often, but you can retard it till it starts running rough and then advance it till it starts running rough and set it in the middle. And it'll be, you know, it'll be okay. But let me show you this. I was just curious as to what the stock timing is supposed to be, so I got my motor's manual out. And I went to Chevrolet 327, 1969. Manuel transmission, 235 horsepower. It's probably got 150 now. Anyway, it says set the timing at two degrees after top dead center. That seems kind of odd to me, but hey, that's a factory setting, that's a factory motor. Let's try it and just see what it does. Sudden base timing, you want to pull the vacuum line off your back of the vent. I'm just going to stick it in this, this uh, little valve cover thing here, stop it up.
after and let me lock it down. Well, I got it set at two degrees after top dead center. It's got about oh, what was it, about 12 degrees uh, vacuum advance and right around 30 total. And I mean, it seems to be okay. It's it's accelerating better than it was the first time I drove it. So I don't know. We'll leave it there and just see what it does. But uh, let me show you how I had to fix the throttle cable. I had to go back with the with electrical connector because. I can't find anything in town to fix this and of course nobody has a throttle uh, cable for a 69 Impala so for now that's gonna have to do what I did I used thicker cable and uh, I double wrap this through that connector and encrypt it real good we'll see what it does maybe it'll hold up and then I got to figure something out see what I can find online to fix that but uh, the old girls running pretty good now or idling anyway so I think we ought to take her for a ride. All right, let's hit the road. Right rear ain't locking up no more. That's good. like the back brakes are fixed but the front brakes are worse you know it was pulling in the other video pulling to the left some but it's terrible now so let me get the front end jacked up and we'll look at the front brakes see what's going on all righty i think i see the problem this is the driver's side and as you can see most of the rust is gone off the rotor just from the little bit of driving i've done but this hose is hosed i mean it is wore out and i think it's the 53 truck hose not the 76 camaro rotor and caliper hose so i may have trouble getting it you know quick and the bearings are a little bit loose so i may uh repack them bearings tighten them up but let me show you the uh, passenger side as you can see it's just as rusty as it can be it's doing nothing so either the caliper stuck or it could be the hose stopped up uh so I'm going to see about getting calipers and hose. I'm not buying rotors. I already looked them up and they are $80 a piece. I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to buy a cheap set of pads, let it wear that rust off. And then if I had to put another set of pads on, it'll be fine. So let me see uh, about getting some parts ordered. Well, believe it or not, O'Reilly's has both front hoses and the rear hose. So I'm going to go ahead and change the rear hose too. They should be here by 3 o'clock today. But... It's looking like rain, 
So we may not be able to get it done today, looking like rain tomorrow, may not be able to get it done tomorrow. That's why I need to get my dang shop built. I'm so sick of having to work around the weather. This caliper seems to have the new brake fluid. It uh, is the chocolate flavor. Yep, that's pretty disgusting right there. Pretty disgusting. This is the hose off of the passenger side. When I took the metal line loose from this, uh, brake fluid poured out the metal line. So I was curious and I thought, well, this right here might be stopped up. So watch this. Nothing's coming out. So it was stopped up. That's the problem was the hose. So there's nothing wrong with the caliper probably, but I still opted to go ahead and rebuild them instead of buy new ones. Hopefully they're not all rusted inside. I'll fix the tear apart. We'll see. All right, I'm going to use here to blow that piston out of there. And let me tell you, don't put anything you value in this area when you're doing that, because it will hurt it. I promise you. See what I'm talking about? That man should devil have a finger right there. I'll just clean these pistons off a little memory cloth. I cleaned up pretty good. It's got a little spot right there, but I think it'll be just fine. And this truck is going to get a completely different front end, hopefully soon. So this is just, you know, to get me by until I do get the new front end on it. Now I guess we need to tear these seals out of this uh, caliper housing here. There's that one. In the piston seal. I gotta have a pick for that. R it is. It's just a square cut seal. And then I'm gonna clean this up inside here and then maybe do a little bit on the caliper. Well I got the bore cleaned out. Had to do a little bit of light sanding, nothing major. Uh, the piston it fits in good now. Now I'm gonna take this uh, bleeder off and unstop it and then this one will be ready for the seals to be ready to put it back together. Let's have a little intermission here in the middle of this movie and I'm going to tell y'all what I've been pondering on this truck. I don't normally name vehicles. Matter of fact, I've never named a vehicle that I can remember. But I think I want to name this old truck. And I've pondered on a name and I believe I've settled on one. And let me tell y'all the story behind why I want to name it this. My granddaddy, we called him Papa, which was daddy's daddy. They called him Dude. I don't know why. I really don't. They just called him Dude. Well, my daddy, they called him Billy Dude. And then some at the place where I used to work, they would call me Little Dude sometimes. So, from henceforth on, this old truck will be known as Dude. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. I got both calipers cleaned up and they're ready for seals, so I'm just waiting on them to get here. Whilst I'm waiting, I'm cleaning up these four spots here because these calipers don't have the slide bolts like modern day calipers. It slides on these spots here. I'm just cleaning them up, uh, get the rest off, and uh, I'll do the same to the bracket. And then right before I put them on, I'll put some white grease in these spots and just help it slide a little bit better. Well, fellas, there's been a major development in these calipers. I got curious, so I got on O'Reilly's uh, website and looked up 76 Camaro rotors, and I compared them to what I have. Do you see any difference? Let me get it the same angle. Do you see any difference? I see a lot of difference. This one has the slide bolts. This one has the slide places here. Then I got to looking at the numbers on them. Don't that look like a Chrysler uh, emblem right there? I have no clue what these calipers come off of. I could have swore he told me 76 Camaro, but apparently I was wrong. I think what I'm going to do, these uh, old seals, I cleaned them up. They're not cracked and they look, you know, brand new. They weren't leaking. So I think I'm going to put these new seals and these new uh, dust seals on. And we're gonna ride with it. All right, this probably ain't gonna be real fun, but maybe they'll go together decently. 
I like to put a little brake fluid in them before I start. This helps them slide a little bit. Then I'm going to put a little bit on this seal here. Get it put in. Now let me get this on this piston like so. And this is the fun part. Uh, getting all this in here. So, it might take me a few minutes to do it. I don't know. Alright, now, I gotta get this seal work down in there. Hopefully. do that one more time and then they'll be ready to be put on the truck whilst I'm sitting here waiting on my parts that I don't think I'm gonna to get today I decided to see if I can figure out what uh, these calipers come off of well it's got a 963 number right there next to that Chrysler emblem I got on the old interwebs and did a 963 caliper search and lo and behold look what it pulled up 1962 to 74 Mopar brake calipers. And it looks just like it. So I guess the uh, uh, rotors, they probably are uh, 76 Camaro rotors. Then he used these calipers. Why? I don't know unless maybe the uh, caliper bracket was easier to mount. I don't really know. But now we know uh, what these come off of. Well, it just dawned on me when I got all these parts home that these uh, brake pads, they're not going to work. I ordered them for the 76 Camaro. And if you remember, we found out these are Dodge calipers. Supposedly 62 to 74, but that's wrong. I'll get to that in a minute. And the hoses I ordered, they're wrong. See the difference in the size? Uh, and I went out there in the barn and looked at the 51. And they're just like these old ones that come off 53. So these are just wrong. But um, I can use them if I can find an adapter. But uh, as far as brake pads go, I've been looking for two hours trying to find brake pads. I've looked up various models from 62 to 74. Brake pads, they're, they're not right. Finally, I don't even remember how I did it, but I come across 73 Plymouth Valiant has the right brake pads. They look just like these. So I have no idea what these come off of, but they will fit a 73 Plymouth Valiant. So now I'm headed back to Ireland to get all this parts returned, get the right ones bought, and maybe, eventually, this truck will be back on the road. It's the next day. I got some new parts. I've already checked these brake pads. They're just like the old ones, so they'll work. Then I got three of these little adapters so I can use these hoses. It's threatening to rain all day, so Let's get busy and get the brakes on the front of this truck and get it on the rope. Alrighty, let me start by putting some grease on these slide points here. Then I'm going to put this inside pad on, like so. Then you have to put the outside pad on to the caliper. Then let me slide the caliper on, just like so. They got some little keepers here. And hold them on. Apparently copper washers must be really expensive because they didn't include any with these hoses. So I guess I gotta use the old ones. Now I need to get this hose and this line attached. So 
This clip ain't gonna work because the groove ain't big enough or this tab is too thick. Uh, anyway, we'll leave that off. This side's done. Let me go to the other side and then I gotta bleed them. All four brakes are bled. Got the front tires on. Master cylinder's full. But it just occurred to me while I was filling that master cylinder up that I don't have a clue what that come off of. I thought it was a square body, but looking at it now, no. Square body's this hold down. It goes side to side like this, so. I don't know what that come off of. I looked up 73 Plymouth Valiant. It doesn't match. There are numbers on this side, so I'll uh, do a search on those numbers, but it don't really matter because all of that's going to change. Eventually, I'm going to go with power brakes. I'll talk about that here in a little while, but for now, let's hop in there, head down some back roads. All right, let's hit the road, but I got to stop at my house first and uh, see if I left the air cleaner over there. a short-lived trip the hits just keep coming with this old truck I had a big old puff of smoke come rolling in the cab from that big hole in the floorboard and uh, I pulled over to just see what was going on and well let me get under there and I'll show you see how shiny that front axle is right there see the oil dripping off of it on the bottom got a bunch of oil on the oil pan too and on this front cross mirror right here front main seal has started leaking really bad you know, I just changed the oil and it's already showing low on the dipstick, so it's really pouring it out. So, I guess I'm going to change the front main seal. I guess I'll go ahead and pull the radiator and the water pump. You know, we need a new water pump anyway. Get them out of the way and I think I'll have plenty of room to get the pulley and balancer off uh, down on the crank. So, let me get started doing that. take this hood latch assembly off. I believe it'd just be a lot easier if I do that. Alrighty. You ought to see the leaves in here. That's quite the collection of leaves down in there. I'll have to clean that out.
I've got a homemade puller that I use to get the balancers off. And I just stick the bolt back in the crank. That way you don't mess up the uh, threads in the hole. Here's my homemade puller. As you can see, it's got several holes in it. I don't know what all it fits, but usually if I need to pull something, I'll go get this. And if my holes don't line up, well, I'll just drill some loops. homemade balancer locked up on me these threads should be fine thread but I'm sure that's all I had at the time when I made this so this ain't no good anymore so I went to O'Reilly I got the next best thing an actual puller so let's see if this will work alrighty I guess I need to buy one of them pullers this dampener has got a it's got a groove in it. It's kind of bad. But I don't have another one. And well, about the only thing you can do is either get a new one or get one of those uh repair kits. Um I think we'll just try it like it is, put a new seal in it. Alrighty. That seal's pretty hard. And you can see where does it go? Right there. See where it's cracked? And there's a couple more spots where it's cracked, so most likely it was just the seal. I mean, that's 53 years old, so you know it's pretty hard and dry. So we're gonna try it without doing the repair on the uh, dampener here. Some people don't. I usually do. Put a little RTV on the outside of my seal, and you stick it in there and get it started. And on this one, I have a two inch by one inch bushing, PVC bushing. And that's what I'm going to use to drive this in. Maybe. Now it's time to put the dampener back on. Normally I would beat that on with a hammer probably. Well, Whilst I was getting the puller, I figured, well, let's borrow the installer too. So, let me figure out all these little gadgets and then we'll get it put on. All right, I think I got this little installer figured out. I guess next I need to clean these water pump areas. Get ready to put it back on. Well, I'm in here swapping pulley and fan from old to new. Does that look like it's a direct replacement to you? It don't to me. If I use that, it'll be through the other side of my radiator. Listen to this old water pump. I'd say that's just a little wore out. Well, I've never tore apart a small block Chimelay water pump until today. And here it is. This is your shaft impeller. It sticks in here like this. There's a cover that goes back here. This seal goes on like this. It rides right there and fits. That part fits down in there. And the bearing, well, I tightened it up in the vise and the outer race just pretty much exploded. Uh, it's eat up a little bit. I was going to try to see if I could find a uh, bearing a seal and just rebuild it. But I'd probably have to order it online. So it'd be just as good to order a whole water pump the right one if I can find it. So I guess that's what I'll do. So waiting on parts again. Well, I think I've got the right water pump now. It at least matches this one. What the deal is, is my little pea brain. I completely forgot about the short and long water pumps that Chevrolet used through the years. Uh, the 69 Impala, which is what this motor is, came with a long water pump. That's what I had yesterday. 
apparently daddy changed it and put the short one on it and i just didn't know it what i did is i got on uh o'reilly's and looked up various years of chevrolet v8 cars until i come across one that <clears throat> looked like this this is a 68 impala 327 and a 69 and 70 corvette also has a short one anyway i've got to uh swap this fitting and this plug to this water pump and then get stuff put back on can we go longer than a mile without something breaking this time i don't know I've been letting it sit here and warm up while I check for water leaks and oil leaks. Well, we didn't fix it. Let me get under there and show you. I don't know how well it'll show up on camera, but uh, see that little crack right there in the paint? That's where it's leaking from. I can push on it right there. I feel the timing chain rubbing it. It's rubbed a hole in this uh, timing chain cover from being sold slack. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do at this point. The old motor's wore out, and to put a new timing chain cover and timing chain on it, I'll have to drop the oil pan, which it won't be too hard on this truck because there's no cross member in the way. But I don't know that I want to go that deep into a motor that's this wore out because it is wore out. It's got a lot of blow by. I could put another motor in it. I got two or three options there. I got the 283 I never built. We can rebuild this 327. I've got an LT1350 short block we could use, and I'm sure I got another 350 block laying around somewhere. So I'm not real sure what I'm going to do there. Uh, I do have a lot of plans for this truck. Well, let me just walk you around and uh, show you what all I want to do to it you know, in the near future. Y'all have to excuse me because I'm trying to lose my voice. I'm getting pretty hoarse right now for some reason. Anyway, uh, let's start with the suspension. The front end, I always thought I wanted to put a Mustang 2 front end under it, but I got a, a S10 frame. I'm thinking about taking the front suspension off of it and putting it in here. Uh, you know, that way I'll have good uh, suspension, I'll have good brakes, good steering. You can get parts for them. You can get drop spindles for it, you can get uh, drop springs, and it's a lot cheaper than a Mustang 2 front end because I already have it. So I gotta do some measuring and figuring and thinking on that and see if I can do that. Next, power brakes. It's got to have power brakes because you really have to stand on these, these brakes to get it to stop. If you need to stop quick, you're gonna be in trouble. But let me just pop the hood and I'll show you what the issue is with that though. See that master cylinder, both of them? The smallest uh, vacuum booster I can find is seven inches. You can see, I don't have the room here for seven inches. I don't want to get rid of my uh, clutch master cylinder. I like my hydraulic clutch. So I've got to uh, see about my options on different power brake setups. I could put the booster, you know, way out here, you know, get it around that master cylinder, but I think it'd look kind of goofy. So I just got to figure out what I can do there. Next, steering. It's got to go. It will wear you out trying to drive this truck. You got to stay on top of it because it's got so much slop in it. Plus, I want power steering because in a parking lot or driveway, unless you're rolling, you can't steer it. It just, it'll work you to death. 
I'm thinking about electric power steering, which that'll go under the dash. Then I might use uh, the S10 steering box. I don't know. I'll have to look and see. Might go with a, a rack and pinion. I could go with a, a power rack and pinion. And uh, I probably got enough room for a power steering pump in there. But I'd most likely go with an electric power steering pump just to make things easier. We've already went over motor options. Uh, you know, I, I got plenty of options there. Tail lights. I know that sounds weird, but let me walk back here and show you. It's only got one tail light. That's all it's ever had. And as far as I know, unless the law has changed, all you got to have is what the vehicle come with. That's what this come with. One tail light and no turn signals. And I never, you know, back when I used to drive it, I never had any issues with cops pulling me over. But nowadays, you know, things are different. So I might go ahead and put two tail lights on it and turn signals. Matter of fact, the old 51 out there in the barn, it has a turn signal mechanism thing that you put on the steering column. And I might steal it off there and put it on here. You know, just to have uh, turn signals right now, that would be pretty easy to do. Let's look at the interior and uh, see what I want to do in there. It's pretty rough in here. It's not pleasant to drive. It's not pleasant to be in. <laughs> pretty loud and it gets pretty hot. Need gauges for sure, because these are old and well. This one here, I had to break the glass out of it just to be able to use it. You know, it's got that white plastic ring that holds the glass in place. Well, that broke, fell down, and the needle wouldn't move. So I had to break the glass out of the way just to have an oil pressure gauge. So we need new gauges. That big hole in the floorboard there. It's a really good heater in the summertime. I don't really like heat in the summer. So I need a boot there. Then I need to get the right battery so I can put that battery cover back over that and that'll stop some heat and noise. Seat, uh, it's probably time for a new seat. That gets uncomfortable pretty quick. So yeah, I need a new seat. Like I said, power steering. Uh, if I do the electric, I think I got plenty of room right in here to mount it. It needs sound deadening because it's pretty loud in here. Plus, need to uh, stop up all the holes. And I've got two different air conditioning units that uh, you know hang underneath the dash. The whole unit, ductwork, blower fan, coal, all that hangs under the dash. I got two of them we can put in here. I always have to get a compressor and a condenser coil, but that's something I can do. But the old interior is just pretty rough. Also, I want a four-speed. I had a four-speed in it. Let me tell you that story. A long time ago, where I used to work, I was working second shift, and me and the guy I worked with wanted to go to uh, supper that night to Burger King at the mall. Well, we took my truck, this truck here, and leaving the mall, I pulled out on the road, I dumped the clutch and let it fly, and it blew the entire side out of that four-speed, left it laying in the middle of the road. I had to pull me back to work and then pick up the parts and then had to trailer it home from work. That was an adventure. It was old cheap Saginaw transmission. It, it wasn't tough. But I do have a Borg Warner T10 on the shelf in there, and I got another, I believe it's a Muncie. Well, let me just, let me pull them out, and I'll show them to you. Well, here's the Borg Warner T10. See right there, it says Borg Warner. It's got a date code on the other side there. Let me spin it around. Right there, it says 5-19-76. It needs an input shaft, as you can see. And that's what that's for. I bought, well, if you've seen the motorcycle video, I think I mentioned that the back of the old 51 in the barn was full of transmission parts. Well, that's why. I needed that input shaft, so the guy had this, but he had four or five boxes of transmission parts in general. I had to buy it all, so that's how they ended up in the back of the old truck. And I need to go out there and, and uh, clean that out sometime. Anyway, that input shaft will go in this transmission. It, it's got to be uh, rebuilt because it's, it's pretty sloppy. And I got a Muncie. Uh, let me get it down and I'll show you it. Here's the Muncie right here. And the only way I know it's a Muncie is you go by the shape of this side cover right here. I don't know where I got it. I don't know where I got the uh, Borg Warner. I've had them so long. I don't remember. 
but either one I use I'm probably gonna go through them and uh, rebuild them so I got that option on transmissions I would like to have a six-speed but you know they cost a little money and this here is stuff I can do in the next couple of months because I want to get this truck roadworthy I want to be able to jump in it and drive it whenever I want to also while I was getting these transmissions off the shelf I remembered something else I had let me show you that I've got this Offenhauser three deuce manifold this was daddy's and he was gonna put it on the old 40 out there so I will probably keep it for that but it is an option to put on this truck then I got an aluminum GM uh, four barrel spread bore so I have to get me a quadrajet for that but that's something else I can put on it if I want to I got several options for the motor for this old truck I just gotta decide what I want to do and that's the hard part but I do want to use what I've got because it's cheaper I don't have to save up money to buy anything like I told y'all I ain't rich I gotta use what I have I just hate that we didn't get it on the road this episode I got license and insurance on it and I'll be looking forward to driving it so I think what I'm gonna do right now is let's hop in it and take it to my house it's only a couple miles away We'll put her in her parking spot for now and then you'll be seeing more of this truck in coming video so be looking for it all right here we go Can't win them all. If that's what you're expecting from this channel, well, you're gonna be disappointed. I ain't perfect and I ain't gonna try to make it look like I'm perfect. We did get a bunch of stuff fixed on it though, so that's good, but we got a whole lot more to do. So be looking for more videos on this whole truck because they're coming. Appreciate y'all watching. If you don't mind, hit the like, comment, subscribe. Share the video with your friends. Hit that notification bell so you know when I got another video coming out on it. And until next time, go do something.